sound better. Welcome to our first lesson. In this lesson, what we're going to be talking about is how to write good melodic dubstep chords. Now, the thing that's important to know is that everything in melodic dubstep will always revolve around emotion, and having good chords that can provoke emotion is huge. So we want to make sure that when we're writing our chord progression, it is the best it can be, and it is what we want it to be. So first thing we got to do is make sure that we load a piano in. Um, I like to use complete controls, the gentleman. I think it's classic. It works. It's got some nice, uh, some nice options I can use to mess with the dyna dynamic range or the resonance on the pedals. You can use Ableton Grand Piano. Honestly, Ableton Grand Piano is fantastic. Uh, it gets the job done, no doubt about it. Um, but you can use whatever you want. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our project is set to 145 BPM. You can do 140, 150. Um, that's usually the range of dubstep, but 145 to me just has a good rhythm, so I think that's what we're gonna go with today. Next up, we're gonna create a MIDI clip. So let's hit Command Shift M, and let's open up our session. Now, you can use any scale you want. Um, it's totally up to you. I like to write in D major. I just think it has a very nice warm tone to it. So let's just go with that for this lesson. Next thing I wanna show you guys is a little bit of a production tip. Um, you can do this if you might, be not, might not be the best with music theory, or um, you're still learning music theory. This is something that helped me a lot in my early production days and I would like to pass it on to you in hopes that it helps you. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna set every note within the D major scale all the way up to its next octave, which is uh, uh, 12 ha whole step, half steps. Um, and as we set these, we'll just ghost them out so we know how to reference them. Uh, so anyways, we'll go two, two, one, two, 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 one which is the major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually hit zero. And now that these won't ever play, if we play anything over them, what we still know is at the end of the day, we can always come back to these notes because these notes are in our key. So let's get right into it. Let's start writing our chords. First, I'm gonna start with a D major chord. Nice warm chord, right? It really gets the job done. Um, now what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna go to the six, which is a B, and that'll be a minor chord. Let's actually bring this up. Nice, I like that, that sounds good. Now I feel like this wants to go to the five, so we can bring this down, and if we look right here, that's actually gonna be A. So we can go to A. Nice, that has a good flow to it, right? We're already kind of feeling something with this. So now that we have our five chord, we can now pick one note uh, we'd like to end on, and I think we're gonna go with the three, which is uh, F sharp minor. So let's grab this, excuse me. Let's grab this over to F sharp. Yeah, so we're gonna bring this up to F sharp, F sharp minor. Nice, cool. So we have a basic idea, um, and since we are learning intelligent producers, we are gonna make an eight bar loop. And since we're writing melodic dubstep, we gotta have some good chords that variate. So let's get into our eight bar loop. And we don't have to do anything crazy over here, honestly. Uh, we can come with that with our melody, but we do want it to be a little different, so. That's cool. I actually like that. We actually don't need to do too much for now. Now let's start making this more exciting. And we can start doing that with adds and inversions. Basically what I mean when I say an inversion is we want our chords to flow smoothly together. And if you see this relation right here between this note and this note, this is quite a jump. And if you were playing this on the piano, this would be a little bit hard of a reach. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hit shift down on the arrow and we move it down an octave. And now this is called an inversion of what we just did with this chord making this relationship a lot less bigger than as if it was out here. So now let's do the same throughout. So it looks like this stays pretty steady. We get a little crazy up here. So let's take these two notes and then we can bring this down, down, and there we go. So now we have a smooth sailing through our chords. There's no big jumps. The bass line is exempt, obviously, um, because if you were a piano player, you'd probably pay, play it with your left hand. Um, we're focusing on our first, our third, and our fifths of our chords. Beautiful, cool, we're making some good headway. Next thing we can do is we can actually start adding different notes to our chord progression to really make it pop. Um, and 
we can do that by just kind of picking notes that we know would fit well and adding them on. So if I have another A right here, you can try this. That sounds warm, doesn't it? So let's just start adding chords that are gonna make this warmer. See now already it just kind of feels a little more cooler, you know? Cool. I think that's a really good progression actually. I think that this will be great to build off of. Let's make sure that we keep this over here too. Um, just to make sure that that's going to stay the same. So now we have our chord progression. This is something that we can work off of through the entire song and we have a basic idea. Uh, something that's also actually very important to do is to remember that we should always duplicate this and then delete everything that's on this. Now the point of this, the method behind this is just that no matter how far we go, we can always just have our original. We know what chords we had in the beginning and we can always come back to it if we need it. Now going back to this, let's develop this a little more with maybe like a melody. I really did like that one that we were playing earlier. When it hits right here, this is cool. That's really cool. I actually really do like that. So let's start actually going up now. So now we can figure out what kind of maybe what higher notes do we want. And it's kind of cool to play like chord tones, you know, which are notes within the chord. I'm kind of hearing like a come down kind of thing. Yeah, something like that. So now we can also use this too if we ever get lost to come back to know which notes are actually in the key. Um. Let's keep this idea. Oh. Let's keep this idea rolling. And maybe we can go up on this one. Cool. So now we have a chord progression. This is something that we're gonna build off the rest of the song and the rest of the project. This will be our bass. I really like how this sits. Um, I think this is a great chord progression to build off and to make a cool drop into. Thanks for hanging in through this episode. Next episode, we're gonna talk about how to start synthesizing this.